Sir, fully as I was in my representation of matters in the commissary department yesterday, fresh and more powerful reasons oblige me to add that I am now convinced beyond a doubt that unless some great and capital change suddenly takes place in that line, this army must inevitably be reduced to one or other of these three things. Starve, dissolve, or disperse in order to obtain subsistence in the best manner they can. Rest assured, sir, this is not an exaggerated picture, but that I have abundant reason to support what I say. Yesterday afternoon, receiving information that the enemy in force had left the city and were advancing towards Derby with apparent design to forage and draw subsistence from that part of the country, I ordered the troops to be in readiness that I might give every opposition in my power, when, behold, to my great mortification, I was not only informed, but convinced that the men were unable to stir on account of provision, and that a dangerous mutiny begun the night before, and which with difficulty was suppressed by the spirited exertions of some officers, was still much to be apprehended on account of their want of this article. This brought the forth the only commissary in the purchasing line in this camp, and with him, this melancholy and alarming truth that he had not a single hoof of any kind to slaughter, and not more than twenty-five barrels of flour. From hence form an opinion of our situation when I add that he could not tell when to expect any. All I could do under these circumstances was to send out a few light parties to watch and harass the enemy, whilst other parties were instantly detached different ways to collect, if possible, as much provision as would satisfy the present pressing wants of the soldiery. But will this answer? No, sir. Three or four days' bad weather would prove our destruction. What then is to become of the army this winter? And if we are as often without provisions now as with it, what is to become of us in the spring when our force will be collected, with the aid perhaps of militia, to take advantage of an early campaign before the enemy can be reinforced? These are considerations of great magnitude, meriting the closest attention and will, when my own reputation is so intimately connected and to be affected by the event. Justify my saying that the present commissaries are by no means equal to the execution of the office, or that the disaffection of the people is past all belief. The misfortune, however, does, in my opinion, proceed from both causes, and though I have been tender heretofore of giving any opinion or lodging complaints, as the change in that department took place contrary to my judgment, and the consequences thereof were predicted, yet finding that the inactivity of the army, whether for want of provisions, clothes, or other essentials, is charged to my account, not only by the common vulgar, but those in power, it is time to speak plain in exculpation of myself. With truth, then, I can de declare that no man, in my opinion, ever had his measures more impeded than I have by every department of the army.'